Hey, how's it going? Firesalt here. This is my first video for Ark Survival Evolved, and today I wanted to go over my strategy for completing the mission Star Dolphin on Alpha Difficulty. This is by no means a perfect run during the first two phases, but the third is solid and the fourth was nearly flawless. If you're struggling to complete this mission, I hope you'll stick around to hear my tips. In the first phase, you must get through the firewall door with at least 14,000 points. As you go through on your Astrodelphus, you'll see many attack drones, corrupted survivors, and turrets. You need to destroy these to rack up points, because if you don't have 14,000 by the time you reach the firewall, your run is over. It's very important that when you first take off, you destroy as many drones as possible, because what you're looking for right off the bat is a damage boost. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, I was fortunate enough to get one, and there's a second one on the left path with your first turret on the other side of it. If you're unable to get two damage boosts by this point, I'd recommend just starting over because it makes it that much more difficult. You're probably wondering what the heck I was doing a second ago, and I was fortunate that this didn't cost me to fail the mission, because the game actually stopped letting me shoot for some reason. It actually cost me three turrets and some drones, so you're probably looking at 2,000 points lost. However, following my usual path where I stayed to the left allowed me to recover, and fortunately, I was able to pick up some much-needed damage boosts to save the run. This tunnel is crucial. If you hit all five turrets, you can collect an easy 3,000 points. In the next room, you'll want to go left around the pillar because this allows you to hit both turrets prior to the narrow path, which has an additional three turrets. I did miss the one on the right in this run, so there is some wiggle room. Now you'll enter the final area prior to the first firewall. There's four turrets in this room, and I'd say the goal is to destroy three of them, and at least two corrupted survivors. As you can see, I barely had enough points to make it through the first firewall. In the first room of phase two, there's one turret on each side and corrupted survivors. I only focused on one turret because I glanced up and noticed my health was below half, and I really needed that power up. Be sure to keep destroying as many drones as you can, because you will also want to be collecting as many grenade power ups as possible. You are going to need a lot of grenades later in the run. I was honestly a little all over the place with my aim in this run. Typically I'm fairly accurate and don't struggle to get through these first two phases as much as I did in this one. Your primary focus for a bit will be the drones. But as soon as you hit these spots with turrets and survivors, you will need to immediately turn your focus to them. Destroying the turrets and survivors will give you far more points than the drones do. Once you reach this spot where you round the corner, I'd say you should have or at least be close to 20,000 points, and have at least half a dozen grenades. The damage boost power-up is essential for racking up points in this area. If your buff is green, you're doing an insane amount of damage to where drones are one shot while the turrets and survivors take two hits. Next, we enter a room where HLNA speaks. Again, shoot as many drones as possible, then go left. You should be able to take out at least one survivor and both turrets, then quickly head left around the wall and back right toward the middle of the room. This next part is a must. Hit the hover skiff with a grenade to destroy it, and then navigate your way through the pillars. If you're close to 28,000 points like I was, there's enough drones in the next area to get you over the top and onto phase three. Even if you already have the points needed to get through the firewall, you should always shoot drones for the power-ups. Hold on, hold on. Trying to open the firewall. Now we've reached stage three, where we're given the task of protecting an Astrocetus from waves of enemies. The biggest threat to the whale is the comets, as they do insane amounts of damage. In fact, I think an Astrocetus loses 1,000 health every single time a comet hits it. If they are not destroyed in time, they can demolish your entire run in no time. After a short while, the first hover skiff will spawn and make its way toward the Astrocetus. There would typically be two hover skiffs with a little more than 16,000 health each, but because we successfully destroyed the skiff in phase two, only one will spawn. Whatever you do when taking this thing out, do not use any of your grenades. You will want to save those until later because there's a second pair of skiffs that will show up soon. Your focus should primarily be the skiff, but don't forget about the drones. You will definitely want to keep getting power-ups in this phase, primarily the damage boost and grenades. By the time the second pair of skiffs spawn, you'd ideally have about 15 plus grenades and the strongest damage boost, which is indicated by the green buff the player receives. Just keep flying around for a few minutes shooting everything in sight. It's best to clear out the comets before they get too close, and it is perfectly fine to forget about the skiff to deal with multiple comets. The skiff barely does any damage to the whale, whereas the comets can do a massive amount. 
When my focus is on the skiff, I pay attention to incoming comets and will generally turn my focus to them when they're about 400 meters away. Even if you don't have the max damage boost, this allows you enough time to destroy the comets. Now, I'm going to be quiet for a minute and I'll be back after I finish taking out the enemies and eventually the skiff. Okay, you're going to have to be on your toes because the next part is going to send more comets and waves of drones. Just keep focusing on the comets and kill drones for those boosts. I'm going to do that now and I'll be back when the next set of skiffs spawn. Steady on. Here they come. Power up. Nice. Trouble coming and fast. Something's coming. Watch out! The second and final set of skiffs have now spawned in. Hopefully you've been able to collect a bunch of grenades by this point because it's so helpful to speed up the process of destroying these skiffs. It's probably possible that even without grenades you could focus on comets and take out the skiffs in between, but you'd really have to get great luck with the game dropping damage boost power-ups. If you have a bunch of grenades, just shoot all of them at the skiffs and forget about everything else. In the process of damaging the skiffs, you should also kill nearby drones which will, of course, drop even more power-ups. You should be able to ignore all comments until you've destroyed the skiffs, but of course your run may be different, so just pay attention to the health of your Astrocetus.
We've now defeated Phase 3. See how easy that was? The whale still had plenty of health, so even on the hardest difficulty, there was room for error. The final phase is upon us, and this time we're facing the Master Controller. This boss only has one attack, but if you get caught in its path on this level of difficulty, you can die in a matter of seconds. It happened to me in a previous run while recording this tutorial. I'm sure there's multiple strategies out there for defeating him, but pay close attention to what I do in this run. This is by far the best run I've ever had in this battle, and I managed to kill him in about 2 minutes 40 seconds. I like to stay close to him and just be super aggressive as I circle around shooting at him. I've tried different strategies like keeping my distance and taking my time, but that method is yet to pan out for me. As you can see, I'm in attack mode constantly, ignoring all drones for the most part. However, the drones eventually pile up and I recommend using any leftover grenades on them. It's a quick way to kill a lot of drones and at this point any power up would be a sight to see, especially health boosts. When he does the laser beam attack, if you get caught in it, you could lose up to half your health or possibly even more. In my previous run, I got caught in the beam, couldn't escape to collect a nearby health boost, and went from full health, the mission failed in under 10 seconds. In my opinion, the longer the fight goes on, the greater chance you'll end up getting annihilated by the beams of death. This is why I try to speedrun through this stage, because unlike stage 3 where you can generally take your time, this one is far more dangerous. Never give up, survivor. Trust your instincts. As you can see, this was a near flawless stage. I hardly took any damage, and that is simply a miracle. Typically, this stage has been the weakest part of my runs, but after a mediocre performance in the first two phases, I was very happy to put together a strong run in the end to complete this mission. Anyway, I felt like this was a solid run. It's actually better to show off an imperfect run, because you as the viewer can see where I may have made mistakes as opposed to a run where I do everything perfectly and you struggle to replicate it. I wanted to share this run in case someone out there finds it useful and needed some tips to help them complete it. When I first tried this mission on beta difficulty, even with a teammate, I thought I'd never be able to complete it. However, it always helps to go in with a proper strategy for max performance. Best of luck to you in completing this mission. See ya!